Hello everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. Today I want to talk briefly on one of the worst feelings in the world. What is that? Well, it's when you bomb your coding interview. So you spend night after night, weeks, maybe even months preparing for this coding interview. You wake up a little bit nervous, but you still feel good about it. You go in there and you bomb it. Wow, one of the worst feelings in the world. In this video, I want to talk about how to best handle that situation. This Chick-fil-A in every city. We're stopped in the middle of the road. Lines all the way up through the restaurant. I'm believing this is everywhere. Can I get the spicy deluxe sandwich with no pickle? I don't like pickles on it. I don't even want the stain. All right, I don't want the pickle stain on the bun. No pickles. before we get started if you're into coding web development career advancement you like videos like this consider clicking that subscribe button below and hit the bell to be alerted when new videos are published and there's good videos on the way so let me start this off with my own little bombing the coding interview story so I had a coding interview a while back for this software position and they told me hey the interview is going to be in C sharp and it's gonna be in JavaScript. Now, I felt pretty confident with JavaScript. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. I didn't really worry about that, but C Sharp, what? I don't have experience in a C language. However, I have used TypeScript in Golang before. Both of those are typed, so I understand the typed side of it. And so what I did was I picked up this book, How to Learn C Sharp in a Day. I went through it and found out that a lot of it is really similar to other languages, so it wasn't a huge concern. I went through the book, I felt okay about it. So, came time for the exam, I jump on the call, he says, hey, which one do you wanna start with? Let's start with C-sharp. So he pulls out some questions. I had four questions, one of them was the infamous fizz buzz, which I never really practiced before, but it's pretty straightforward. But anyway, I nailed all four of them, okay? Got all four of the C-sharp questions, was feeling really good, hey, this is going great. The guy even said, hey, you got some coding skills. All right, let's move on to JavaScript. This should be a lot easier because that's my language. Well, here's what happened next. My internet started acting up, and when we pulled up the coding questions, the tests weren't loading on the page correctly. It was throwing some kind of error. We thought it was my internet. We tried a different, a couple different browsers. Uh, we realized, hey, there's something going on with the software, um, and it just wasn't working. This took like 30 minutes. We had to build out, we had to download Jest. We had to build out this node solution to test my problems in JavaScript. So that took 30 minutes and that took us way out of the way. I think the guy was getting a little frustrated with my internet issues and it kind of made the atmosphere kind of tense. And you don't want that when you go to a coding exam. You want to be calm and you want to think you're doing good. But the guy was getting kind of annoyed with my internet. We finally got this thing up and running and he tells me, hey, we got 10 minutes left. Do you think you can do the four questions in 10 minutes? Well, the only answer I could think of was sure, let's give it a shot. So I did two of them in 10 minutes. I didn't do four. And because I only had 10 minutes, I made these really, really stupid mistakes, these novice mistakes. Like anything six and greater, I would forget to include the six. I just these dumb syntax mistakes because I was trying to rush. Hey, I got 10 minutes to do four questions. And so I made a bunch of little amateur mistakes and I got the first two, I didn't get the last two, and he wasn't happy at all. He was like, hey, these are amateur mistakes. I don't think I can recommend you for this. And, but you know what, I gotta go. Uh, he had to call some person, I think he was late for something because of me. So it made the whole situation terrible. It was hot in my house, and just made a bunch of mistakes. So what went from a great interview turned into a horrible interview in no time. So he told me, hey, finish the last two questions and email me within 15 minutes. Well, when 15 minutes came, I didn't have either one of them solved. I had them almost solved, but not quite. So I wrote him back, I said, hey, I don't have them completely solved. So he said, send me what you got. I finished the last two, I sent it to him, and it was just a horrible interview. So JavaScript was my thing, and I, I totally messed it up. I just, situation was tense, and I just made the dumbest mistakes. So I felt horrible. Hey, I wanted this job, I did good in C-sharp and I should have done great in JavaScript. Hey, I can do better, I can do better, right? But it didn't work, I did horrible. The guy couldn't recommend me and that's the way it is. So afterwards I felt really bad, you know, I went and kind of laid on the couch and was like, oh, I missed my chance, so stupid. But 
And hey, this is going to happen to you too. You're going to do this. You're going to be prepared for it. And you're going to bomb it. You're going to feel the same way. When this happens, you only have two options. So let me give you the two options. So number one, you can feel horrible. And it is a horrible feeling. But if you choose number one for feeling pity on yourself, you're the only person affected. Okay, these guys that interviewed you, they go on with their job. These other code newbies out there, they're learning. They're, they keep applying. It's just you that feels miserable. And it may take some time to get over it. But the faster you get over it, the better. Okay, because everybody else moved on. You're the only person that's left in this state. Or you can choose number two, which is to say, this coding exam, these are the issues that I had trouble with. I need to go and study these issues and this coding exam overall gave me the exact things I needed to be a better coder. One day I'm going to be an awesome coder and this interview is going to be part of my journey of becoming that awesome coder. That's the right outlook when you fail this exam and you will fail these coding exams. Almost everybody does bad on them because there's, there's not something you can practice normally. You think you have everything down and then you get put in this situation and things happen. But look, choose number two. Don't get upset for long. It's going to take, you know, a little bit of time, but hopefully, you know, within an hour or so, shake it off. Shake it off. Don't be the only person that's affected while everybody else is moving on. Choose number two and say, hey, let me look over this. What steps do I need to take to learn this stuff that I messed up on? and become a better coder. So I walked away from that exam with like three things that I really needed to study up on. And I did, and so I have three more things in my belt that I learned and I memorized well because I always remember I failed this exam because of it. Also, the more you do these exams, the more confident you feel, the less nervous you get going into them. So in general, take it as a wonderful thing, take it as part of your coding journey and learn from it. All right, that's all I got today. I just wanted to share that with you because a lot of people face the same situation. So hey, if you like this kind of video, you like coding, web development, things like this, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Hit that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. Lots of great videos on the way. Hit that bell if you wanna be alerted when they're published. And you have a great day.